Hello everyone, welcome to GS Core. Today in this session, we'll be discussing about current affairs questions through MCQs. And the topic that we are going to discuss is biology. Let us start with the questions. First question is, mitral valve is essential part of which of our internal body organ? So, mitral valve, which are also called as, also called, Bicuspid valve. Bicuspid valve. They are the valves between. They are the valves between left atrium. Left atrium, and the left ventricle. Left ventricle. Of. Of the heart. Of the heart. Fine, and that's why answer is C. It is the valve between the left atrium and the left ventricle of the heart. And what is the function of mitral valve? Its function is function is to ensure to ensure that blood flows in right direction. Blood flows in in right direction. That is the function of mitral valve. Fine. So it is an essential part of human heart. Next now. Second question is with reference to Kala Azar, consider the following statements. First statement Kala Azar, also known as visceral leishmaniasis. So this statement regarding Kala Azar is a correct statement because. Kala Azar is caused by a protozoa parasite, protozoa parasite called Leishmania, called Leishmania. Fine. So, as, a, as it is caused by a protozoa parasite called Leishmania, it is also called as, the disease is also called as visceral Leishmaniasis. So, first statement is a correct statement. Second statement, it is spread to humans through bites from female Addis aegypti mosquito. Right. So, it is saying that the statement is saying that the spread of Kalazar is through the bite of female Addis aegypti mosquito. This statement is an incorrect statement because Kalazar is spread through the bite of female sand flies female sand flies of the family of the family pelebotomine pelebotomine sand flies they lead to spread of kala azar and not female edis aegypti mosquito this female edis aegypti mosquito leads to spread of dengue fine and that's why that's why second statement is incorrect so our answer is a one only Next question. With which of the following viruses have their genetic material encased in a layer of fat called the lipid envelope? So, this statement or this question is related to lipid envelope layer of fat around the viruses. So, it is coronaviruses coronavirus and influenza viruses which have this kind of lipid envelope and that's why they are also called as enveloped viruses they are also called as enveloped viruses right on the other hand polio virus and rotavirus do not have this kind of lipid envelope and that's why they are also called as non enveloped that's why they are non enveloped viruses Fine. So, when coronavirus was seen in the news, uh, especially in 2020, early parts of 2020, WHO gave guidelines that we should wash our hands with, uh, we should wash our hands with soap or alcohol-based sanitizer. This is because soap molecules have a tail, and this tail of soap molecule is is oleophilic it is oleophilic tail 
and as a result of oleophilic tail that means oil loving tail the soap molecules can can destruct the lipid envelope lipid envelope of these viruses can be destructed by the oleophilic tail of soap molecules and that's why we were able to address the coronaviruses and influenza viruses with the help of hand wash fine and that's why answer is a 1 and 2 only it is coronavirus and influenza viruses have have lipid envelope polio viruses and rotaviruses they do not have the lipid envelope next point next question antimicrobial resistance is an alarming threat putting humans and animal health in danger regarding antimicrobial resistance consider the following statements first statement it occurs when microorganisms change in ways that render the medication used to cure the infections they cause they cause ineffective right so first of all what is antimicrobial resistance or amr amr is a resistance it is a resistance shown by shown by microbes it is a resistance shown by microbes so these microbes they develop resistance against against drugs which used to treat them earlier that means these drugs were able to treat diseases caused by these microbes earlier but now these microbes have developed resistance against these drugs and hence these drugs won't be able to affect the diseases caused by the microbes and that is what is considered as antimicrobial resistance and because of antimicrobial resistance the medication which was used to cure the infection earlier will become ineffective and that's why first statement is a correct statement regarding this question right second statement now when the microorganisms become resistant to most antimicrobials they are known as superbugs so this statement is also a correct statement when the microorganisms become resistance to resistant to most antimicrobials that are known they are considered as superbug and they will not have the known medication and that's why we'll have to use uh, we may have to use a combination of uh, of medicines against them right so they are called as those microbes are called as superbugs so second statement is also a correct statement third statement it encompasses resistance to antibacterial antiviral antiparasitic and antifungal drugs right so uh, this statement is also a correct statement because amr antimicrobial resistance is a larger term it is an umbrella term which includes antibacterial antiviral antiparasitic antifungal drugs fine so all these three statements regarding amr correct are correct and that's why answer is d 1 2 and 3 so answer of this question is d next question now next question is consider the following statements first cyanobacteria are a group of photosynthetic bacteria living in symbiotic relationship with plants so this statement is a correct statement because the cyanobacteria are the bacteria which are primarily found in in water primarily in water but they are also present in soil but uh, given their uh, common common finding in water they are often considered as the uh, as the bacteria present in aquatic ecosystem fine so these bacteria they live in association with plants they live in association with plants and they can carry out their own activity of photosynthesis and that's why first statement is a correct statement these are photosynthetic bacteria and they live in association with plants fine so first statement is correct second some cyanobacteria are capable of fixing nitrogen right so especially in aquatic ecosystem these cyanobacteria are capable of fixing nitrogen or they are considered as important bacteria in aquatic ecosystem which are carrying out the uh, fixation of nitrogen so second statement is also a correct statement third all cyanobacteria produce toxins harmful to humans and animals so this statement is an incorrect statement right because there are certain cyanobacteria 
that lead to production of that lead to production of uh, of toxins but not all cyanobacteria will produce or are producing toxins and that's why this all term becomes uh, extreme term in this case and that's why third statement is incorrect statement fine so uh, you must have heard about the death of uh, death of elephants in one of the african countries uh, around 2019 2020 so that was because of the cyanobacteria that led to production of toxins which led to death of those elephants fine so third statement is incorrect first two are correct answer is b one and two only question number uh, this question answer is b next question now next question is scientists in the netherlands have discovered a potential new organ named tuberial salivary gland in this context consider the following statements right so a new gland has been uh, has been discovered it is called as tuberial salivary gland let us consider the statements first this gland lubricates and moistens the upper throat behind the nose and mouth right so uh, this statement is a correct statement because earlier we were aware of three salivary glands and now this is the fourth uh, and newly discovered salivary gland which lubricates and moistens the upper throat behind nose and mouth first statement is correct statement second until now there were only three known salivary large salivary glands in humans right so this statement is also a correct statement because earlier we were aware of three large salivary glands first was first was under the tongue first was under the tongue second was under the jaw under the jaw and third salivary gland was behind the cheek right at the back of at the back of jaw behind the cheek at the back of jaw behind the cheek fine so these were the known one and now we have known one more and it is it is called as tuberial salivary gland right so both these statements regarding this question are correct and that's why answer is C both one and two. Answer is C both one and two. Now next question. Next question is consider the following statements. First, acquired immunity is non-specific type of defense that is acquired at time of birth. So this statement is an incorrect statement because acquired immunity, acquired immunity is not is not present at the time of birth it is acquired through the life right and it is it is specific to the to the virus or to the pathogen that has led to a certain disease it is not non specific it is not general in nature it is specific in nature and that's why first statement is incorrect statement second statement innate immunity is pathogen specific and is characterized by memory so this statement is also an incorrect statement because innate immunity is present since birth and it is not characterized by memory. Moreover, innate immunity is non-specific in nature. It is not related to, it is not uh, the result of specific type of infection. And that's why second statement is incorrect statement. And you can consider these two statements as interchanged. Right, so acquired immunity and innate Im immunity statements are interchanged. Third statement, monoclonal antibodies provoke one's immune system to generate antibodies that are effective in fighting the foreign antigen. Right, so foreign antigen is being fought as a result of antibodies produced with uh, monoclonal antibodies, with the help of monoclonal antibodies. This statement is again an incorrect statement monoclonal antibodies are themselves antibodies they are used to treat a certain infection they do not lead to a production of antibodies and they are not helping in the uh, uh, in in the uh, building immune system right rather monoclonal antibodies are taken from the person who has just recovered from the infection and it will be used those antibodies will be 
cloned and will be used for the treatment of other other patients fine so the statement the statement is a statement related to vaccines and not related to monoclonal antibodies and that's why all these three statements are incorrect we are supposed to find out incorrect statements only answer is d right all these statements are incorrect statements next question now what is mange seen in news recently so mange is a skin disorder it is a skin condition skin condition caused by caused by mites caused by mites fine which lead to which lead to uh, loss of fur in animals and that's why answer is b right it is a skin condition causing loss of fur in animals result of bites right so this question answer is b next which among the following disease is caused by caused due to an autosomal abnormality right so we have 23 pairs of chromosomes 23 pairs of chromosomes are there out of these 23 pairs first 22 are non sex chromosomes also called as autosomes and 23rd pair 23rd pair is sex chromosome it is also called as allosomes right when there are aberrations when there are aberrations in autosomal chromosomes those aberrations are called as autosomal abnormality autosomal abnormality fine and one of the one of the common abnormalities in autosomes is the result of 21st autosome and that abnormality is called as downs syndrome right autosomal autosomal abnormality in 21st chromosome leads to downs syndrome downs syndrome it is also called as mongolism it is also called as mongolism fine so answer is a next question now which of the following are the components of darwin's process of natural selection right so uh, we know that darwin gave his theory of uh, theory of natural selection under which there were certain components uh, of the natural selection and those components are variation inheritance high rate of population and differential survival and reproduction right so all these are the characteristics all these are the components of uh, darwin's process of natural selection fine so answer is d 1 2 3 and 4 next question now so that is about these questions thank you